Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306 and today I have an interesting video, sort of an experimentation I guess you could say. So uh, most of you know already that I started uh, producing, developing, and selling um, RGB modded Game Boys uh, that are backlit and touch sensitive where you can cycle through the different colors very easily. Uh, but it was brought to my attention recently um, that some of the units, uh, people are experiencing added noise uh, coming from the speaker uh, due to some sort of noise or interference. And so today I thought I'd get to the bottom of exactly what's going on and and how noisy is that noise, I, I guess you could say. Anyway, I wanted to kind of uh, come up with some kind of experimentation of all the Game Boys I've installed. Personally, I haven't noticed it's been too bad, but... I wanted to see what the relative noise levels between an unmodded uh, stock Game Boy versus just an RGB modded one versus an RGB modded one uh, with extra capacitance. Uh, this guy, this is my experimental donor <laughs> with extra capacitance that can be turned uh, switched on and off inside the circuit here. So this will be my uh, experimentation between these three units and uh, let's get into it and I'll show you what my experimental process is, what my setup is, and I'll show you guys the results. Okay, so this is exactly how we're going to run the experiment. I'm going to place the um, audio recording device, which is this, uh, this SanDisk Sansa uh, Clip Plus. I'm going to be recording onto the internal memory or the SD card, doesn't really matter. So I'm running Rockbox and I have the gain uh, pushed up 16.5 decibels for all the, all the recordings. I record it into one continuous file. I have it placed about so because the internal microphone is right at the top here. So it's relatively close to the speaker. I place them all right on in between the D-pad and the, the face buttons uh, right up until the um, start and select buttons. So they're all physically in the same location. The speaker volume on all the units is turned all the way down so that you only hear the noise. And to record, I just hit record, I flip the switch on, wait a couple seconds, flip it off. And so I've done the same test for uh, the first unit is the original unmodded uh, DMG. There's no backlight, nothing's done other than I had to repair uh, the power switch and the battery contacts were quite corroded, but other than that, Game Boy works perfectly, absolutely nothing wrong with it. Next unit that I tested, similarly, was this Clear Play It Loud. And this does have my uh, my RGB backlight installed. And um, it's biverted as well, though that wouldn't really have an effect, I don't believe. Um, but there's no extra capacitance. I'm just relying on the internal capacitors that came in this unit when I bought it. Um... I'm pretty sure these have never been replaced. I'm pretty sure this was actually never opened. Uh, so additionally, last unit I wanted to test would be um, my test case. Um, so both of those are sort of the standards that I'm comparing this guy to. And this guy is um, a black play at lab. This I have, um, I biverted and I've uh, RGB modded with my RGB controller chip. And if I carefully flip this over inside, uh, you can see I've tacked on two extra wires onto the 5 volt rail that I'm drawing current from uh, for my RGB chip. And I've hooked those up in series with, uh, well, in parallel with two extra, uh, was it like 330 microfarads, something like that. So for a total of about 636, 50, 660, whatever, uh, um, microfarads of capacitance that I have a series switch in so I can turn this on and off, on and off at will uh, just by pressing this little switch here. So for this test, I had the exact same setup and for a couple seconds I recorded without me pressing the switch. So these capacitors effectively are not in the circuit. And then after a couple seconds, I press the switch, hold it um, for another couple seconds and then record the results of having this extra capacitance in in the in series or in parallel with the onboard capacitance uh, So this would be akin to either replacing the capacitors with larger ones or adding extra ones uh, in parallel uh, Which would improve the the performance of the DC DC theoretically So the whole point of this experimentation was to see exactly how much of a difference that makes now 
Uh, just a little bit before I show you guys the results of the amplified recordings, I just wanted to give you a um, possibly a taste of what it sounds like actually to my ear. So I'm going to turn this on, and I'm not sure if you guys will be able to hear this or not. So pretty quiet, I would say. If you get your ear right up against it, you can definitely hear some noise, but not too bad. So next is the clear one, the uh, clear DMG. Not sure if you could hear that, but there's definitely some kind of uh, high frequency squeal that you can hear. But once again, you don't really hear it up until you get maybe about this far away with your ear from the Game Boy. So during normal play gameplay, it's not a problem for me personally. Obviously, this changes if you're doing LSDJ stuff and you have it hooked up to amplified speakers and all that stuff. And finally, the uh, the black modded, um, you know, and added capacitance, switched added capacitance uh, DMG here. So that is without. Um, the extra capacitance, and you can hear definitely it is louder than the clear, play it loud, uh, even though both of the units right now without the switch being thrown have the original capacitors inside. Now let me hit the switch. Basically, once I hit that switch, I can barely hear that sound. Um, maybe if I put my ear within one or two inches, I can still hear a little bit of a squeal but it actually does a pretty good job these uh, extra capacitors definitely do a pretty good job of uh, suppressing any extra noise now this is all sort of unscientific so let's go ahead and actually record this and and amplify it I'll increase again so that you guys can definitely hear the relative differences between the three units okay so here we are I uh, recorded all my audio with this little uh, Sansa uh, clip plus onto the SD card and within I'm actually running Rockbox on this so I'm able to change the gain on the recording so I upped it immensely to make anything audible at all and so I've actually imported the file into um, Audacity here so that I can see the waveform as well as click through it easily uh, because the volumes to begin with were pretty low I've had to up the gain maximum to even get a chance of uh, hearing it you know showing you guys this so basically, um, these large spikes are me turning the Game Boy Switch on and then off, and then me fumbling around with the record button and whatnot in between um, to pause the recording while I'm setting up for the next Game Boy. So the first one is the original Game Boy unmodded, and I'll give you guys a, uh, a play on that. And so, obviously, these aren't actual volume levels, but this is for a relative analysis. So you can see during this stretch, there is some sort of electronic buzzing, and this is a completely unmodified uh, DMG. I think it's a Revision 6. Uh, so it's a little bit earlier than the Play It Loud ones that I have in my collection currently. And so then the next up is the clear Play It Loud that I have, which is RGB modded. Uh, other than that, there's no extra capacitance. I've never changed any of the capacitors. So you can hear it's a little bit louder, uh, but not really that much more than the original uh, unmodded Game Boy. And then finally, uh, as an example, so I have my uh, Black Play It Loud, which is RGB modded with my chip. Um, this is without extra capacitance. And then you can see a tiny little blip here. This is when I flip the switch in order to add an extra 630 microfarads of capacitance onto the 5 volt rail. So let's give it a listen uh, before and after that extra capacitance is added. So you can definitely hear there's some sort of high pitch squeal in this model versus the. Um, the clear DMG, which didn't really have that same characteristic noise. And even in person, the clear DMG, for some reason, sounds quieter 
even unmodded. So there's obviously some variability in terms of the aging of the components inside the Game Boy between the clear DMG and the black one. Now, let's listen as I flip that switch how adding that extra capacitance affects uh, the, the noise level within the audio. So this is without extra capacitance. This is with extra capacitance. So yeah, during this point in time, you can definitely hear the, the kind of the change between here right before I switch over and between here right afterwards. And you can, if, if I were able to zoom in on the waveform, you would definitely be able to see a difference in terms of the amplitudes. Um, but this is just sort of a simple um, experimentation to show you guys. Yeah, so hopefully you guys uh, found that all interesting. Um, the results uh, between at least the three units I have, obviously I can't cover the entire spectrum. I don't have uh, more than three DMGs to experiment with. These were my experimental findings. Um, obviously, if, uh, if you guys have a unit yourself and you install my chip into it, your findings may be different. It may be louder. It may be quieter. It really all depends on the condition of the Game Boy, the um, the electrical life of it, basically how long it's been used, uh, under what temperature conditions it's been used and stored in. There are many factors that affect the life of a capacitor and as well as the internal audio circuitry within the Game Boy. So I can't obviously speculate about all Game Boys in general, but these are my result findings for the three DMGs that I own. And hopefully you guys found this interesting and illuminating. I sure did. Um, it was really cool actually seeing uh, what the effect for kind of the spectrum of modding Game Boys is, uh, because I've been talking with my buddy Rourke, and he's told me that um, there really is quite a wide variance in terms of even unmodded Game Boys. He'll get a box of like 15 in, and you know, no two will have quite the same noise level <laughs> and whatnot. So this is a very interesting uh, case study of uh, Game Boys. I don't think I've ever seen anyone do something like this. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you have any issues, um, if you are planning to install my, my RGB chip and you're very sensitive to noise and it's something that is very high on your list, maybe you're an audiophile, maybe you're into uh, making music, like 8-bit music with your Game Boys, then unfortunately, as of right now, my chip probably isn't right for you. It does emit some audible noise. Uh, this is normal operation in the way that it actually generates the red, uh, blue, and green colors and the way that it mixes them. However, I am working in on, uh, hopefully within the near future, of developing a kind of a pro audio, you know, pro audio version of my chip that'll have much, much, much lower noise and less of an impact on the audio circuitry. So that'll take some time for me to develop, and I need to do a little bit more experimentation. But anyway, I've rambled on for long enough. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, put them down below. Like, comment, subscribe. Do what you guys do, and I will see you later. Bye.